خدمت ہے اللہ کے نام کے ساتھ جو بے انتہا رحم کرنے والا بن مانگے دینے والا اور بار بار رحم کرنے والا ہے ان اللہ عالم میں اللہ سب سے زیادہ جاننے والا ہوں یہ وہ کتاب ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہدایت دینے والی ہے متقیوں کو جو لوگ غائی پر ایمان لاتے ہیں اور نماز قائم کرتے ہیں اور جو کچھ ہم انہیں رزق دیتے ہیں اس میں سے خرچ کرتے ہیں اور وہ لوگ جو اس پر ایمان لاتے ہیں جو تیری طرف اتارا گیا اور اس پر بھی جو تجھ سے پہلے اتارا گیا اور وہ آخرت پر یقین رکھتے ہیں اللہ صلی اللہ محمد و علی محمد مبارک وسلم ان کا حمید مجید جزاکم اللہ سن جزا کین آئی ریکویسٹ مظفر کلاک صاحب ٹو گیو دی انگلش ٹرانسلیشن اف دی ورسز جسٹ ریسائٹڈ دی ورسز دیٹ یو ہیو جسٹ ہرڈ ار فروم سورۃ البقرہ ورسز 1 ٹو 6 ان دی نیم اف اللہ دی گریشس دی مرسیفل الیف لام میم دس از ا پرفیکٹ بک دیر از نو ڈاؤٹ ان ایٹ ایٹ از ا گائیڈنس فار دی رائچس who believe in the unseen and observe prayer and spend out of what we have provided for them and who have believed in that which has been revealed to thee and that which was revealed before thee and they have firm faith in the hereafter and it is they who follow the guidance from their Lord and it is they who shall prosper. Zakra. Jazakum Allah, Sun Jazakum. Can I now request uh, Farid Mubashir Sahab to read out uh, Nazam, please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Awsaf Qur'an-e Majeed. Nure-e-Furqan hai jo sab nooron se ajla nikla noor e furqa hai jo sab nooron se ajla nikla پاک وہ جے سے یہ انوار کا دریا نکلا حقی توحید کا مرجھا ہی چلا تھا پودا کی توحید کا مرجھا ہی چلا تھا پودا نہ غیب سے چشم اصفا نکلا یا الہی تیرا فرقا ہے کہ ایک عالم ہے یا الہی تیرا فرقا ہے کہ 
एक आलम है जो जरूरी था वो सब इस में मुहैया निकला किससे इस नूर की मुमकिन हो जहां में तशबी किससे इस नूर की मुमकिन हो जहां में तशबी वो तो हर बात में हर वस्फ में यकता निकला वो तो हर बात में हर वस्फ में यकता निकला पहले समझे थे के मूसा का असा है फुरका पहले समझे थे के मूसा का असा तो वहां फुरका फिर जो सोचा तो हर एक लफ्स मसीहा निकला नूर फुर है जो सब नूरों से अजला निकला पाक वो जे से ये अनवार का दरिया निकला जकला अमिताभ साहब यू आर ऑन म्यूट जजाक अल्लाह थैंक यू मैन सब सॉरी अबाउट दैट uh just remind members we have now upgraded the zoom so uh we've reached maximum 100 participants but uh other members can join now the uh, capacity has been upgraded uh jazakallah khairan jazaa um respected uh, hafiz fazlur rabbi sahab amanullah sahab members of the national talim ul quran team my brothers and sisters of the midlands region assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I welcome you all to this special virtual Holy Quran Symposium for Midlands Region. I'm extremely grateful that Hafiz Sahab along with the members of the National Talim ul Quran team have given their valuable time and effort to Midlands Region especially today despite their very busy schedule in order to hold today's symposium. May Allah bless them all. We are all aware of the importance and the need to study the Holy Quran on a daily basis with meaning and with split word translation where possible. I am sure most members are doing this. This is a lifelong journey and no amount of study can ever be enough. Through Allah's sheer grace, despite this ongoing pandemic, we are now able to sit in on several weekly Quran classes taking place online. from the comfort and safety of our homes to improve our knowledge and understanding this should not stop and we should continue to study in these classes as much as possible today's symposium helps to give some focus and adds to the vast array of knowledge and resources which allah almighty is making available to us to increase our knowledge and understanding in the study of the holy quran Once again my special thanks to Hafiz Sahab and the National Quran uh, Talim ul Quran team for taking today's symposium. I would now request uh, Hafiz Sahab and the team to take over the program. Jazakallah. Okay, Jazakumullah. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> Sayyid Imtiaz Ahmed Saheb Regional Amir 
Midlands. Um, now there will be lesson one, and I'd like to invite uh, Moeed Hamisab to please share your screen and start your lesson. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, I will. share my screen with you now. Can you see this 10 most common errors on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you, Hafiz Saab. And uh, uh, I welcome all the participants in this uh, class uh, in Quran Symposium in which we are in a process of learning, which is a continuous process. Throughout our lives, we spend learning new things. And Holy Quran is uh, something that we need to learn continuously because there's so much to learn in it. Hello? The topic that is assigned to me today mm -hmm. is 10 most common errors in the Salat. Salat, which is among the five pillars of Islam, Kalima, prayers, fasting, zakat, and hajj. So prayers or Salat is one of the five uh, pillars of Islam without which we cannot claim ourselves to be true Muslims. We have to say at least five prayers a day and the congregational pray uh, prayers, which are now a days uh, not uh, allowed, but we are saying those prayers uh, at home congregationally as well. This, uh, there are some uh, portions of the Holy Quran that, that we need to recite. There are some prayers uh, which are very common to be recited in Salat. So my focus would be among, on only a few words that are used most commonly, the Arabic words out of Holy Quran uh, that are used in the Salat, in the Mass, and how to pronounce them correctly. So my uh, presentation, which is a br brief presentation, I have selected only 10 words which are most commonly mispronounced uh, during namaz or salat. When we categorize uh, uh, common errors that we uh, make during recitation of the Holy Quran, we can broadly categorize them into two main major categories. One category is where if we make a small difference in pronouncing the word, it will change the entire meaning of the word. And in return, it will change the entire meaning of the whole verse. Similarly, there is another major category, which if we don't uh, pronounce a word correctly, um, we can only change, although the meaning of the word remains the same, but the sound effect of the word changes. And those who are listening to us comes to know that we don't understand how to pronounce the word correctly. So these are the most common broader categories. There are finer uh, categorizations further uh, on what uh, change uh, makes what difference. The first main uh, category, which we'll be focusing today in these 10 common errors in 10 words of Salat, would be related to, uh, for example, Fatha, Kasra, and Dhamma. In Urdu, we say Zayb, Zabar, or Pesh. So there are, if uh, these harakat are there on any letter, we need to focus on what the harakat is and uh, pronounce accordingly. For example, if it's fatha, kasra, or dhamma, it is one second rule. The same way uh, we use the one count, one second, or one beat rule in, in music and any, any recitation, that rule applies in the recitation of Holy Quran as well. If it is fatha, kasra, or dhamma, it's one second rule. If it's fatha ishbaya or vertical fatha, and uh, fatha kasra ishbaya or dhamma ishbaya, vertical dhamma or vertical uh, um, pesh, then it would be two second rule. And then the next comes madda sahira and madda kabira, in which four second and six second rules apply. So whenever we are reciting the Holy Quran, this is the most common thing 
that we need to follow when we are reciting. In the same way, in Salat, in Namaz, when we are pronouncing different words, all the rules that are applicable while recitation of the Holy Quran are applicable uh, to Salat as well. So the wording, so for example, Surah Fatiha, when we are reciting Surah Fatiha, we need to recite it with full, uh, uh, full consciousness, full awareness of the rules which are being applied in that. For example, if I take the first example, in Surah Fatiha, we recite Iyaka. So most of the times we get to listen to uh, this word, Iyaka Nabudu Iyakanasta. So if we are, even if we are reciting in a continuity and we are reciting it fast, we need to focus on what the word is. Iyaka. This uh, Alif with a Kasra, Ja with a Shadda, and a Fatha on it needs to be a bit more stressed. So, iyak, iyak. And this alif, iyak, and this alif after ja is, although it doesn't have any um, uh, Arab or harakat on it, this uh, is uh, alif madda. That means it will increase the sound to one second. So, uh, two seconds for tashdeed. Uh, one sec uh, and fatha, and one second added for alif. Iyaka nabudu. Iyak. If we say iyaka nabudu, it would be wrong. So the word, the point to be learned over here is this alif without an a harakat on it is not silent. It has a sound in it, and it has a one second elongation sound. So there are three uh, words of elongation. Uh, Aleph, Ja, and Vow. There are rules allocated to each of them. And this Aleph over here is Aleph of elongation. So the thing to be learned over here is Iyak. The next is Na'budu. So when uh, we are pronouncing Iyak Na'budu, if we pronounce Ayn as Aleph, it will make the sound totally different. Na'budu is wrong, na'budu, na'budu. So the point to be learned over here is that every letter in the Holy Quran has its own sound. There are some similar letters like alif and ayn. Alif and hamza are the same things. Uh, they produce the sound of a. Uh. And ayn is a huruf halaqiya. It comes out of, uh, mm, the, the throat, uh, the inner part of the throat, ayn. So when we are pronouncing na'budu, we need to be focused. And there is a sukun on ayn, so there isn't a jerking sound. Na'budu would be wrong. Na'budu. Iyaka na'budu. When we say about jerking letters, there is a separate, uh, a separate set of letters in which when they are having a sukun, whether they are in the middle of a word or at the end, it, they will have a jerking sound. So there is a separate rule. And if we just want to learn that rule as well, Qutub Jad, Qaf, Twa, Ba, Jim, and Dal, these are uh, uh, letters, five letters which, which have a jerking sound. But Ain is not one of them. So, not Pudu. So if uh, we keep practicing alongside when I'm reciting this word, all of uh, our viewers and listeners, if they try to practice it alongside, it would be much better experience. Na'budu. So the next word is Hamid. Ha-mi-d. The ha at the end is ha and uh, with a uh, vertical dhamma, but it, when we are stopping at this word, it would be hamid. Again, the difference between ha and ha, there are two types of ha in the Holy Quran at different places. Ha, which is very similar to jim, is a thick letter and we have to uh, pronounce it uh, from uh, the 
end of our throat. Ha, ha, ha. The difference, if we were to practice the difference between two ha, if uh, uh, mm, we feel while pronouncing this word, this ha, our tummy will not move while pronouncing this ha, which is in front of us. And if the other ha, which is usually we in Urdu, we call duan kumalihe or ya ha. Uh, so when we pronounce it, it is coming, the wind is coming right from the stomach outside and we can feel our tummy moving in that. So ha and ha needs to be learned. Ha mi the. And then one second rule, uh, ha mi the. Uh, if we pronounce it like that, it would be wrong. It is one second rule, ha mi the. So in this letter, th the difference between thick letter and thin letter, and then the right pronunciation and where to stop and this uh, vertical dhamma is not pronounced when we are saying Sami Allahu liman hamid. So uh, this is what is to be learned in this word. The next word, most of the times when we are um, uh, sitting after this uh, sajda and we, we say Atahiyatu lillahi wa salawat. Attahiyatu lillahi is wrong. If we see the structure of this word, it is atta, atta, its ta is mushaddad, lam is silent, atta, hi, ya, hi, ya, hi, ya. Ha is uh, joining with ya, which is mushaddad. So whenever there is a mushaddad a word, there is a two second stress on it, one second for, uh, for its. Uh, 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 sukun and one is for its Arab. Hiya, hiya tu, attahiya tu, attahiya tu lillahi. So, most of the times when we are reciting this, we are making a common mistake, which is attahiya tu lillahi, and we are pronouncing it with ha with a uh, fatha on it. So this ha is with a uh, uh, kasra, which is zair. So attahiya tu, attahiya tu. So that is uh, the catch in this, and that is a point of learning in this particular word. The next word is Ayuhan Nabiyu. Ayuhan Nabiyu would be wrong. Ayu, Ayu, whenever there is a mushaddad uh, word, we need to have a full stress on it. Ayu. Ayu ha, and this ha is the example of the other ha. In the previous ha, it was coming from the tip of uh, end of the throat. Ha, ha, but this ha is coming from uh, inside um, our lungs. Ha, ha. Just in Punjabi, me hoke hama ka lafz hai wo just na andar se aata hai. Ha, us tarah se ba nahi hai. Ye wo this ha is coming from from inside. Ayu han han nabiyu. So if uh, we see there are three silent words uh, letters in between ha and noon, and so those three silent letters are not being pronounced uh, pronounced in this word. Ayu han nabiyu. Noon is mushaddad. So again, stress on it with a fatha. Ba with a kasra and it is joining with ya which is again mushaddad so there are three mushaddad letters in this word ayyuhan nabiyu ayyuhan nabiyu so that is basically the right pronunciation for this word wabarakatu so uh, today morning when we uh, started our discussion before this uh, session started, I made that common mistake, which is right in front of us. Most of the times when we are saying Salaam Alaikum to each other, we say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. So this ha at the end is not pronounced like that. It is ha. Wa Barakatuh. Wa Barakatuh. So again in this, the, the, this alif is alif of elongation. So in this letter, one second rule is applying. Who 
because it comes at the end. So it, the ha would be uh, losing that uh, harakat and it would be her. Wa barakatuh. So this is something to be learned and it is a most common error which, which we uh, do in our daily, daily discussions as well. The next let word is Rabbij alni. Rabbij alni. Rabbij alni. Ra is one second rule. Fatha. Ba with tashdeed with the kasra and alif is silent here because there is a sukun letter a joining letter jim and as i mentioned earlier that there are um, some letters which have jerking sound and i mentioned that qutub jad if we remember this qaf ta ba jim and dal these are five letters which if they come at the start or at the end of any word, they have a jerking sound. So that is the, this uh, word is the best example of that. Rabbij, Rabbij alni, Rabbij alni. If we say Rabbij alni, it would be jim with a fatha on it, which would be wrong. So the most commonly mistaken word is Rabbij alni muki masalata. Rabbij alni, stress on ba because of uh, its tashdeed and jim with slight jerking sound. Ain is different from alif, so alni, alni, not alni. So in this word, the common uh, thing to be learned is how to pronounce mushaddad letters correctly, how to pronounce a jerking sound, and how to differentiate between thick letter and thin letter. Rabbij alni, and this ya with a sukun on it is become, uh, becoming a ya of elongation, and it is coming at the end of the word. The next example is barakta. Again, this alif is although it doesn't have any harakat, fatha, kasra, or dhamma on it, but it's alif alif of elongation, alif madda. Barakta and kaf is a thin letter. Qaf, the other qaf which has two two dots on it, do nukto wali qaf, it's a thick letter. But this kaf is a thin letter. Barakta, barakta. So that is the point of learning. If we barakta, if we recite it barakta, it would be wrong. If we make the sound excessively long, barakta, it would be wrong because there isn't any fatahish by uh, or madda sagira or madda kabira on it. So uh, that is basically a point to learn in this word. Then the next example is muqimath. Or if we stop here, so again, the difference is fatha, uh, dhamma is uh, to be pronounced one second. This ya with a sukoon on it after qaf is ya of elongation, and it, it will elongate the sound of qaf. There are two silent letters, alif and lam, in between meme and thod. Qaf and thod, both are thick letters. So the difference between thick and thin letter, kaf and qaf, needs to be learned. Throughout the recitation of the Holy Quran, there are so many words which we listen in which this difference needs to be prominently visible when we are reciting. In this letter, fa and sa. Fa, thod is thick letter. Tha, which is uh, uh, different sounding uh, letter. There are three letters in the Holy Quran, fa, seen, and thod, which are very similar in sounds, but they have different makhraj. They have different pronunciation, how to uh, uh, recite that word needs to be learned. So in this word, 
So uh, that is something to be learned. The difference between thick letters and thin letters, elongation, and then uh, how to join different letters. These are the, the points of learning in this word. This uh, word in front of us is wali wali daya. Wali wali daya. Again, there's one second rule mostly. Wa li wa a li daya. Alif is again over here is a lift of elongation. Wali wali daya. If we say wali wali daya, it would be wrong. Wali wali daya. So whenever there is a alif or a vertical Fata on vow, it would be two seconds rule. So one second, two second, four second, and six second rules is something to be learned throughout the recitation of the Holy Quran. Wali wali dayya, and ya is mushaddad, so there is a, there has to be a stress on it. Dayya, dayya would be wrong. Dayya, dayya, wali wali dayya, wali wali dayya. So that is uh, something to be learned in this word. So, so uh, Jazakumullah from my side, and I will hand over the mic to Hafiz Saab. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is second lesson, and in front of you, you can see the screen decoding silent letters in the text of the Holy Quran. Now, it means that we are going to learn and explore the silent letters or empty letters in the text of the Holy Quran. Now, which Arabic letters are seen empty in the text of the Holy Quran? These are the four letters, Alif, Lam, Waw, and Ya. They can be empty uh, with any stroke or any sign, okay? So we know that there are 29 letters Alif to Ya, Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, and up to Ya, 29 letters. These four letters appear in the text of the Holy Quran. Uh, some of them, for example, Alif could be in the beginning without any stroke, and Lam, Wow, Ya can come uh, at the end or uh, uh, in the middle of uh, a word. Now, what is an empty letter or blank letter? Silent letter means an empty letter without bearing a stroke, harakat, or sign. Now you can see here that this, oh, where is my hand? Alif is silent, means it will not be pronounced, it will not be included in the pronunciation. That has been uh, highlighted, coded. So this Alif and again Lam, again Ar Rahman, Alif and Lam, they are silent, they are empty of any harakat, any sign, and then ar rahim and you can find multiple examples here in this uh, four, five verses of the Quran. And in fact, you can find these empty letters or silent letters thousand times in the text of the Holy Quran. These are just for uh, some examples. So if we just uh, deal with the first verse, the very first verse of the Quran, we find that six times, uh, you know, empty letters, six letters have been um, here written in the Rasm al-Khat. So one is uh, Alif Lam here, Allah, Ar-Rahman, Alif Lam, and again Alif Lam. So they, these are the most common um, silent letters. So now we come to note the important points. Silent slash empty letters may appear within a word or at the end of a word. Within a word or at end of a word. A word cannot start with a silent letter. Remember a word of the Arabic in the Quran cannot start mute position. There must be a stroke, fatha, kasra, or dhamma in the first letter of every word. Only the letter Alif appears in the beginning of some words. In this case, it must be given a stroke, harakat, to pronounce such words. As I mentioned that Lam must come in the middle of a word when it is silent. 
or empty of uh, any harakat. Similarly, vow can come in the middle or at the end. Ya can come in the middle or at the end. But alif, uh, it comes in the middle and in the and, and as well, but also in the beginning. All the other words, lam sakin, lam empty, uh, empty lam or empty ya or empty um, wow, they can't come in the beginning except alif. So these are uh, the important points. Now we come to the case one with because this time, as I mentioned that alif, lam, wow, and ja, these are the four letters which appear without any stroke sometimes in the Quran. And these sometimes are basically thousand times. I'm meaning that in a short uh, text. Now, my presentation is about the cases of alif which appear in the Quran. I am because of uh, a short time and this presentation will only deal with the alif. I am not talking about lam, vow, and ja, and inshallah in future lessons that will be dealt with. But this time you can see this is case one, one second pronunciation. Now in this case, you can find here that this is alif in the beginning of a word, alhamdu, this word is alhamdu. Now alif is a first letter of this word and it has taken a fatha. So it means there would be case one when alif takes a fatha sign or fatha stroke and there would be only one second pronunciation. So alif with fatha, only one second pronunciation like a, al, a. Simple a sound, you know, if from the empty cavity in the, and it is coming from the bottom of throat, uh, connected to our body chest, a. So this is the case number one. Uh, second case of Alif, when it carries a Kasra, and as I am taking the examples from Surah Al-Fatiha, again, one second pronunciation rule will apply here. And role of Alif with a Kasra stroke in the Quranic text. And this is case number two. And remember, this is the word Ihdina has come in the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. And we, you know, um, over 30, 40, 50 times we read at least this word in our prayers on daily, five daily prayers. So alif with kasra is e. As you say, alif with fatha a and this down, uh, i sound e. So when it joins with the next one, you say e dina. So e again, one second pronunciation will apply. So we come to this understanding that alif with the fatha and alif with kasra and this is case number two and now we come to a with regards to the stroke with dhamma so there are only three basic stroke fatha kasra and dhamma fatha kasra they have been dealt with i have already told you now in case three this alif which is in the beginning of a word ugriku this is word from the quran as well and one second pronunciation will be applied here and the sign will be u, simple u sound. Like, uh, um, you know, when we use the word u, like put or uh, similarly some other words. So, u, u, riku. So one second pronunciation of u sound will be applied. So, so far we have discovered uh, the three cases of alif uh, and uh, they come in the beginning, okay? And they come in the middle as well and at the end as well. There are many uh, words of the Holy Quran where this a, e, u sound or that letter comes in the middle and also uh, at the end, okay? Uh, inshallah, from the Holy Quran, we can find here um, that uh, when uh, a, u, e, you know, this, these words come in the middle as well. Um, basically, uh, like for example, you can see the screen here, as I mentioned that in between. Now, this is the word Ra'aita. Now, this word starts with Ra, and in the middle, this Alif takes a Fatha. So it means A. So Ra'aita, Ra'aita. Similarly, 
there there will be uh, you with the kasra and dhamma they would also be here we can find different examples so three cases and now we come to uh, a alif the role of alif role of an empty alif in the middle of a word now in this case the two seconds rule or duration will be applied the two second duration in between a word so meaning case number 4 when alif comes uh, in the middle of a word and provided there is it is preceded with a fatha letter like qaf with a fatha and followed by alif so in here alif will be a two second pronunciation rule will be applied two so, two second prolongation or elongation will rule uh, this the rule will be applied so it will be qal so remember this is uh, this alif or uh, e elongating e elongating alif uh, two second pronunciation will be applied so this is this this is case number 4 in which we find in the text of the holy quran the function uh, and the appearance of alif uh, in the holy quran in this alif is empty but its elongation is based and subject to the previous letter which is a letter with a fatha and technically it is called maftuh letter meaning a letter with fatha and that's a qal now case number 5 is a role of alif in the quranic text case number 5 two second uh, duration at the uh, at the end of a word okay so basically at the end of a word now as we said the case number 4 was that alif is coming in between a word now in this case the alif is coming at the end of a word uh, so rabbana you know uh, all 99% prayers of the holy quran uh, or i can say safely 95% uh, uh, congregational prayers or the prayers start with rabbana so alif it comes at the end and there are so uh, many other examples apart from rabbana and some uh where the last letter is alif and that will be elongating alif meaning uh that will prolong the pronunciation of the previous letter consonant letter so in this case noon is a consonant letter is a proper letter noon and noon na because it carries a fatha but because of this uh, elongating or extender um so alif will Uh, the two second prolongation will the rule will be applied will apply so it will be rabba na two second so these are the fifth case in which we can find alif in different words now we come to a uh, role of an alif after waw sakin now remember this waw here where is my hand on top of that there is a jazm or sukun okay now we find that this qalu qaf with fatha followed by alif empty alif without any harakat or any alamat so that will be uh, alif will be an extender to the qaf sound consonant qa and lam lu and after that because this time we are dealing only with the alif now you can find here after waw there is alif and you will see that there is no role at all of this alif in the pronunciation because if you remove that in the appearance it will be qalu if you uh, if it is there and again the, there is no change in the pronunciation it will be uh, said qalu so why this alif is written here this uh, this is an important question because this time we are dealing with the emerging or appearance or the writing of alif in different styles in different words of the holy quran and we like to understand that why what is the role of alif in different uh, words why it is silent when it is not silent what will what role will uh, it will play so remember this alif is is called technically grammatically and this is the second part of our journey in the in the holy quran our first step or 
our target is to be able to recite the Holy Quran proficiently as far as possible, clearly uh, and in a good manner, in a melodious manner, whatever, meaning as a, an ibadah, an act of worship, either in the prayer or outside the prayer. The second part is to know the translation of the Holy Quran, the split word translation and uh, the understanding of its grammatical structures, how these words are formed and when uh, you know there is a slight change, what change in the meaning. So remember this alif in grammatical sense, in Arabic grammar, uh, grammar it is a, a protective alif. In English, it could be protective alif or uh, in Arabic uh, term, it is alif viqaya. Alif viqaya means that this alif is placed after the word to make a difference between the two words. Because after qalu, there would be another word. So meaning that uh, uh, when we say qalu, it cannot be joined to the next. Uh, in this case, um, you know, dropping all that uh, vow and alif and it is not part of uh, the next word. So when I say qalu and alif is written there, it means that this is a just like a barrier, is like a, you know, is a wall, that this word is ended here and the next word cannot uh, go back or come back to join the, to be the part of that one. This alif is uh, a protecting uh, its boundaries of this word and it's also the boundaries that it cannot merge or it, uh, it cannot, uh, you know, should be understood, uh, be the part of that. When it is uh, joined with the next one, uh, the same uh, structure will be there. But at that time, when uh, such words join with to the next one, then we cannot find a skoon or jazm in uh, on the vow. Okay, so this time we should understand that this alif is acting as a protective alif and it is showing that this word is ending. In other words, in easy words, you can say that this alif, protective alif, is uh, like a, a, a dash or a, a, like a full stop, okay? When we say one word um, and there should be a, a full stop or some um, dash, so it means that this word is complete. Maybe the next word is also coming, uh, but uh, dash say that this part of the word is complete. So this alif uh, must be written there in the Holy Quran. 99% we can find uh, this alif, alif viqaya is a protective alif and uh, it is it has no rule, uh, no role in the pronunciation um, altogether. Now we come to role of, uh, role of an alif beginning a bearing a cross in the middle of a word or in some other mushaf it is with a, a, a small uh, circle okay in our copy of the holy quran where you can find here this uh, the yasal quran which our jamaat publishes all over the world and uh, quite old you know the, this um, for uh, over 100 years we are publishing this kind of uh, writing or um, this style. Okay, here you can find that uh, uh, if I say this word, yeah, now now you can see here on this alif on top of alif, there is a cross, okay? There is a cross. And again, such words, uh, alif, where you can find a cross as well here, la, and cross on top of that, okay? On alif, there is a lam, and after that's alif, and on top of that, there is a cross. So either such words, meaning alif, in the middle of a word, or at the end, there, there, that can bear or hold a cross or a small circle. In uh, other scriptures, especially uh, uh, those who are not printed in South Asian countries, like in Arab countries or African countries, they do not put cross, they put a small circle. 
the meaning of cross or small circle is the same that this alif is written but it should not be be the part of the pronunciation now look here this one a uh, as we said that in the beginning alif uh, can come and with fatha so fa with fatha afa now if there is no cross on alif it will be it should be according to the rules of uh, tajweed or pronunciation it would be afa but alif on top of this cross tells us this alif is written but it is silent it is non vocal it is not a vocal okay it should not be taken as an extender so that will be afa and we go straight away afa in so afa in as we said that here in the quran um this one now look these word afa in and after that there is a meme mushaddad meme with a uh, tashdeed so shadda so afa in mata afa in mata so alif completely silent but it must be written there this is a part of the rasmul khat we in a special way of writing in which the holy quran was written in the time of hazrat uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu so we have to learn that and luckily it is called uh, you know on the margin you can find here as an extra or as a uh, another part of the protection so people's uh, pronunciation are protected or they are guided and on the margin it is say that alif zaida but to me uh, i do not like the word alif zaida uh, um, to be used for the quran though in the text of the holy quran in different masaib you will find specially um, you know this is alif zaida but uh, i think this this word um, my i do not like that term because i believe that nothing in the holy quran is uh, excessive or zaida even any letter which is there there is written is uh, there is a hikma of that and no nothing is uh, short of um in the quran and, and nothing is uh, an access to the holy quran even a letter so i do not like that alif zaida it should be um, written here like alif zaida or uh, you can say that uh, uh, even in the terminology alif zaida excessive alif you, you you would translate in english i would say that this word this alif is ghair maddiya ghair maddiya in english means non elongating that this alif is written there it is not zaida it is not excessive but its function is not elongating is not prolongating is ghair maddiya as we say ghair al maghdub or like uh, some other ghair we say uh, you know the one who is not in that uh, uh, of that category so we know that the basic function of alif is to to do madd means to extend the sound of the previous letter of the consonant uh, alif is an extended this is of the one of the al huruful madda or you can say if that is an adjective it could be maddiya you know like for example we say um um as we in the in the arabic we can say um khairiya or uh, some um huriya you know the, like an adjective um just um in english or in other words so i would say that this is a elongating or non elongating maddiya alif maddiya or alif ghair maddiya or uh, like because in uh, why i am saying uh, maddiya or ghair maddiya because every letter in arabic is considered grammatically in arabic grammatically as a feminine not as a masculine okay when we say alif uh, it is a feminine it is a feminine letter and the adjective or its quality or attribute will be uh, should be matched with that one um, in arabic for example uh, if there is a mufakham uh, okay so mufakham means the thick um, and mufakhama that will be um, uh, of that category 
I give you one example that if we say noon and it is a, it is a sakin, actual word will be noon sakina because noon or wow or any letter is uh, considered by Arabic grammar, grammar as a feminine. But the, the word harf is, uh, um, is a masculine. So when I say, uh, when we say that, uh, um, um, yeah, okay, Master, okay. When we say that noon sakin, it means we are referring to uh, uh, harfun noon as sakin. But if I say, just say noon, it will be sakina, wow sakina, mean sakina. So I'm uh, making the point that's alif maddiya, alif elongating, and alif ghair maddiya, alif non elongating or you can say in english style non elongating uh, alif the role of uh, alif uh, as a non elongating in this case and i gave you the example from the quran here and uh, these are many examples in the quran with where you can find alif with a cross now case number 8 is where alif comes at the end okay role of an alif bearing a cross or a uh, circle at the end of a word. Remember in the previous case, we said that it is um, in between, among, in between a word, in the middle of a word. But here that is at the end. And again, the function is uh, no elongation due to this kind of alif. And we find the example nad'uwa, when we say, when there is a no cross on that, it would be nad'uwa because wow will be elongated because of alif. And because here is alif on top of there is a cross, this cross is an indicator that this alif will remain silent and it will not be read. But the point is that uh, in the Holy Quran itself, uh, especially here in the our Yes Quran, this uh, copy of the Holy Quran, we should remember this point and this is in Surah Al-Kaf. So we are going to uh, Surah Al-Kaf here and uh, it is uh, in Surah Al-Kaf. Yes, here you can find on uh, this vow, Nad Uva on vow and after that alif. And most of you, when you're reading the Holy Quran, if you do not, if you are not mindful of that extra indication on the left, you will read that, you will read that nad'uwa min dunihi. That will be wrong, okay? Because nad'uwa, it is written here alif zayda. This alif is, uh, should not be pronounced. But the mistake is here that this alif does not bear a cross. Okay, you have to look uh, on the left. In other part of the Holy Quran, uh, the alif bears a cross. Okay, either, you know, I think uh, by mistake, they have, uh, you know, they forgot to place uh, a cross on that because wherever other places in the Holy Quran, the similar uh, places or examples, on the margin, it is also written as Alif Zayda, which I do, you know, I already told you why I do not like that, that term, but let's see, you know, in terminology or whatever available to us, uh, this is written here with a cross. Now here in this word, uh, page number in the copy of the Holy Quran 294, and this is part number 15 and Surah Al-Kaf chapter number 18. Remember chapter number 18, Surah Al-Kaf, and verse number 15. This is verse number 15. So this is part 15 and uh, chapter 18, verse number 15. And here Alif will not be read and it is not, it has, hasn't been placed here. Now we go back again, this word that Alif will be, will not be pronounced, but 
in this place as i mentioned alif will not be pronounced but we have to remember that or if you have this copy of the holy quran in a, at your home take your pen your qalam pen and make a cross or small circle on that so it should be identified with the margin on the margin where is my hand you know here it is showing nad'uwa and on top of alif there is a uh, cross and that should also be matched with that and uh, maybe some mistake it uh, you know it has not been placed now this was the case number 8 and now we go to case number 9 uh, elongation in waqf and not elongating in uh, elongating in waqf and non elongating in wasl alif at the end of a word now here the word is ana okay this the word is ana and as i said that if we are joining with the next word in our recitation this alif is written but it is not pronounced remember nowhere in the holy quran especially this word ana uh, is with a cross or a circle we have to remember that and we uh, needs to be used to with that one and it has come this word ana which meaning i i am like if i say ana ahmadiyun means uh, i am ahmadi ana muslimun i am muslim so ana means i and abidun means worshipper and if you have memorized surah al kafirun you know that what i am talking about ke wala ana abidun ma abadtum qul ya ayyul kafirun here the word ana the word ana has appeared in the quran 41 times the same rule will be applied to here so the point to understand is here when we are joining to the next word in a flow we will say ana abidun wala ana abidun ma abadtum okay but the here in case number say 9 uh, is that that when you are for a exp, um, for teaching purpose or for any other reason you know because of a cough or because of a short of breath you know then you are allowed to pronounce that alif in stopping in waqf okay so the word ana abidun continues that alif will be ignored in the pronunciation but if you are stopping making a stop work from that like for example wala ana that will be wrong you will say wala ana that is in a wasl but joining wala ana abidun if i go to the holy quran and especially uh, surah al kafirun i give you the example from there so that is uh, surah al kafirun here look yeah uh, surah al kafirun here so that is um, qul ya ayyul kafirun la a'budu ma ta'budun wa la antum a'biduna ma a'bud here look here alif if we join we say wala ana abidum ma abadtum but yeah. if i say that i am going to get yeah. stop on here so how would this alif will be read it would be wala ana ana two second elongation will be read if i uh, if ana i am making a stop on this word if i continue then this alif will not be read it would be wala you know together here wala ana abidum ma abadtum wala ana ana you know alif completely ignoring and just reading alif and noon not alif after that okay wala ana abidum ma abadtum but if i am stopping here as a single word i would say wala ana i can't say wala ana okay that will be wrong in because i am following the rasmul khat the way of writing in the in the waqf so that is one uh, important point okay so that is case number 9 and similarly as i mentioned that 41 times uh, the this word has come and a quite good example for you to uh, understand and to for your memory 
is uh, Surah uh, Al An'am, okay, in part number seven. And that is the intention of the prayer, okay? That is the intention of the prayer. And where we have to deal the same uh, in this case, like uh, this, look here. وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَا لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشِّكِينَ This is the intention of the prayer everybody uh, knows by heart, okay? وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَا لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا Here again the word أَنَا has mentioned. If we jo joining وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشِّكِينَ This alif will not be pro pronounced traditionally, okay? But if I say uh, I am, uh, you know, just for a short of breath or I want to for a teaching purpose to my students or uh, for a meaningful uh, pause, I, I, I like to make a pause here. Then I would say, That will be because I am uh pausing here but if i continue then it will be fatara samawati wal arda hanifan wa ma ana min al mushrikin because i am joining and that is a flow so with a flow not uh, elongating and without a flow stopping pausing at uh, this uh, particular word then that alif will be the part of the pronunciation so that is case number nine. And now we come to case number 10. Case number 10. And this is that when two alif join together in two different words. Remember two alif. The, this is a junction of two alif. It is very important to understand case number 10. Every case is important. But this case is a, uh, you know, where 99% people make mistake. So that is why I want to highlight that because in this alif, in the first alif, uh, there is no cross, there is no sign, there is no sign, no symbol on that. And people would say uh, that lahwa, lahwa and wow after alif, it would be say lahwa nil fadu because they say, okay, this is if this is the alif, we have to read that. Remember, first word is ending on alif like the word lahwa is ending on that the other word starting with alif and that is in alif uh, and underneath there is a small noon now if we go to the um, the example or uh, actual wording of the quran uh, the example where it stands in the exam uh, in the text this example we go to suratul jumua Suratul Jumwa, and uh, we find that how we are going to read that. So, for example, uh, this is Surah Al Jumwa. Surah Al Jumwa, chapter number 62. Remember, 62, uh, chapter, uh, chapter number 62, Suratul Jumwa. And also, it is important that uh, in our Arab, in uh, Urdu, or uh, in uh, English, we call, uh, very conveniently we say, that Juma, Juma. If I say Juma, J U double M A H, Juma, or we say Juma, simple J U M A H, Juma, both are technically wrong. Uh, from Arabic point point of view, that is wrong. Actual word is Meme uh, is not with a fatha like a Juma. It's a Jumua, Jumua. You know the actual word is Jumua. The uh, Friday prayers, Jumua prayers, or Salatul Jumua, Salatul Jumua. Look here, the word Allah Taala has used for the in the Holy Quran. Ke iza nudiya lis salati min yomil Jumuati. So if we are pausing at the end, it will be Jumua, not Juma. Okay. Uh, so this is a very common um, uh, public mistake. Okay. Now. Um, the point I was talking about the two alif. Now remember this word is lahwa. Alif is here. And again, a, another word is starting with alif. Now in the first word here, there is no indication that that will be a silent. 
okay, in the pronunciation and uh, how to join together. There is no sign. Now, easy point to understand that, and this is a point to for you to understand and to take a note proper take take a uh, proper note of that. That wherever you find in the Holy Quran this small noon, you know this small noon, and this is called in technically noon kutni, you know noon kutni, a small miniature noon which you can find, uh, you know before alif or underneath an uh, alif. In this te text of the Holy Quran, in our this PDF or Yesal Quran style, this uh, simple reading uh, Holy Quran, uh, you can find this small noon always underneath uh, below an alif, as you can find here, uh, this nin um, fogbu, okay? So in the text of the Holy Quran, where you find a small noon, noon qutni, as I give you the example, and just before that, there is an alif. Never ever read that alif. Simple as that. Number one, look if there is a small noon, and before a small noon, the previous word ending on alif, that alif will not be read. So it will be, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا أَوْ لَهْوًا Remember, I am ignoring altogether Alif. I am not saying أَوْ لَهْوًا فَضُّ Because people are reading in this way. They will say وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا Because Alif, this one say wow would be prolonged because of Alif. أَوْ لَهْوًا فَضُّ That is totally wrong. Because this noon is, is a product of the previous word. Remember this small noon when it is co comes under uh, alif, it cannot be produced if the previous word is not with alif. Okay, otherwise, uh, um, or with the with the noon sound, either with the noon sound or with the with an alif. Mostly, it is with alif. So. Uh, if we continue, it would be that will be the right, right pronunciation. Look, when I say it will be wrong. Now, another point to remember is that you are teaching um, your family members or your class, your students a split word translation. So how do you read that uh, different word, you know, this word, the previous word, lahva? Or uh, you you start from wa izara au tijaratan au lahva and you want to stop here. So in this case, remember, the same rule will be applied here as you can find in the text number, uh, case number uh, here, case number nine. When there is a flow, this alif will not be read. When there is a stop, you will read that alif. You will prolong that alif. You will use that alif as a as an extender. Okay. So similarly, this one, if this alif will not be read when you are joining together, lahwanil fadu. I gave you the example from the Quran. But if you are stopping here, then you will pronounce wa idara au tijaratan au lahwa two second au lahwa. But if if you know if you say okay uh, in in the joining wa idara au tijaratan au lahwa nil fadu. And now I want to stop here, and I will say wa idara au tijaratan au lahw. That will be wrong. It is not au lahw. It would be in posing. And in joining, so case number nine, inshallah, we will give you the uh, this uh, recorded lesson as well. So, so that is the case number 10. So simple is that. Again, I want to repeat that in the text of the Holy Quran, where you find this small noon. And before that, if there is an alif, that alif should be ignored in a flow reading, in a continuous reading. But if you are pausing here, then it will be included in the pronunciation. Now we come to case number 11. And that is uh, where two alif uh, come together. 
but in this case, elongating in waqf and non-elongating in waqf. Now, this is another very important and uh, uh, interesting example where you go to Surah Dahar. Okay, Surah Dahar, we go to the Holy Quran and that is uh, Surah Dahar in part number 19. Okay, that is in part number 19 and you find Surah Dahar here. Okay, again, this is called Alif Zayda. I do not agree with that. So we can say elongating or non-elongating or variable, you can say. Now, Kawarira on Alif, there is a, on a cross and on this Kawarira, there is another cross. Now you can find the same identical word, Kawarira Alif with a cross and Kawarira Alif with a cross. Now point is here, first of all, you have to understand that the second Kawarira, this Alif is fixed, meaning it will not be read. Either, you know, it should not be read. It's a Kawarira min Fiddatin and that is continuous. But here is the catch that on top of that, uh, this is verse number 16, Surah Dahar. And there, another name of Surah Dahar is uh, Suratul Insan. In Arabic Musahif, Mushaf, it is called Suratul Insan because you cannot find the word Surat Dahar in uh, uh, Arabic uh, Mushaf, meaning those who are printed in Arab world. But in South Asian countries and some other parts like uh, South Asian countries, especially, you can find the name of this uh, Surah as Surat Dahar. And this is the only one example in the Quran where one, uh, uh, two uh, identical words come together. One is ending on the verse at the end of a verse and the next verse is starting with that. So basically this look, Kawarira is one word. Another word, Kawarira, in between the two identical words, the sign of a verse has come and that is uh, 16, okay? So that is chapter number 16, verse number 16 as well. So what we have to do that? If there are two ways to point that, and you are given the two options, either you say, Kawari ra, it is okay, it is good, it is permissible. Uh, please uh, close your, uh, what's that? Camera please off, yeah. Or if you say Kawarir, uh, I give you the example here in the Quran. You say the first option, if you like to take, kanat that is absolutely fine. kanat that is fine. And next one, Kawarira, this alif will not be read. Kawarira min fiddah, okay. But if you are making a stop, then you can take a uh, alif as well. But preferably, it is good that if you say kawari min fiddatin. But as I give you the uh, the option here, you know, remember this option, the, 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 the first word kawari I said the both will be good. Like kanat kawari ra, and it is said kanat kawari alif should be ignored. But myself, I would prefer to put Alif definitely in the pronunciation. Why? Because the, this surah starts with, uh, you know, every verse is ending on Alif. Like, Madhkura, Basira, Kafura, Sa'ira, Kafura, Tafjira. You see, every word. Uh, uh, last word is ending on Alif. Asira, Surura. So I would prefer and like to include Alif to make so that the, to maintain the vocal beauty of this uh, these verses. Because if I say Okay, I'm, you know, 15 verses, I am with a sound, two a sounds, zamhari ra, tadlila, hari ra, with double a, triple a sound. And suddenly if I say, 
وَيُقَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِآنِيَةٍ مِنْ فِدَّةٍ وَأَكْوَابٍ وَسَيْ وَأَكْوَابٍ كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرٍ You know that the vocal beauty is compromised because everything you are in a, in a, you know, in a rhythm you are coming that uh, triple A or at least two A sound. And when you, when you um, stop that, you know, you, you take that option, it will be وَأَكْوَابٍ كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرٍ The, the rhythm is compromised. Well, personally, I would like that. You should read that in with the uh, elongating uh, alif as well. So Ooh. vocal beauty is not compromised and it continued with the same, you know, as it is uh, beautiful, like a, a spiritual song because all other, uh, it is coming in the same way. Sal sabila, zanjabila, manfura. Okay, mashkura, tanzila. So, um, Hakima. So, 32 verses in the same rhythm, beautiful pattern, uh, 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 rhythm. And if you take that option, though in the books of Tajweed it is say it is allowed, but I would prefer and I would recommend that in order to maintain the vocal beauty and the, the rhythm, you would say. Okay, so technically there is no change in the meaning. If you say qawarir, it will be, you know, the like a very uh, clean, bright glasses. And if you say qawarir, it will remain the same in the meaning. But I told you about uh, to, to, to um, elevate the grandeur and the vocal beauty, the rhythm, the pattern, it's uh, in, uh, effect on the human uh, ears, listening. So that will be the good. And the Kawarira is uh, already mentioned on that. But you are allied on the both way. So that is like case number 11. And this is the only example in the Quran. I told you the 76 and uh, verse number 16. Okay, and 32 verses. Um, and what I recommended. And now we come to case number 12. Remember in the previous all alif, the previous letter, muftu letter with the fatha, you know, like in this case number 11, uh, the, if this is a alif, before that there was a letter with fatha, muftu letter. Any case like this, um, that was uh, alif and before that vow uh, with fatha. In other cases, alif, noon with fatha. Now, in this is a special case. In this case, alif does not precede with a fatha, but with a kasra. Remember, here is alif, where is my hand? And before that, a letter with a kasra. So it means the pattern is changed. And we have to deal with that. The word is miata or miatu. Remember, alif is written there is uh, no sign on that in the Holy Quran that uh, there is no cross, no um, uh, circle on that, but we have to ignore that. We will say mi ata. It is written, it is not pronounced. So basically, uh, it is uh, non elongating in all cases, in all such words. Okay, so it will be mi ata. And similarly, here, uh, alif, and before that, jim with the kasra is a maksur letter. So alif before a um, or uh, um, after a maksur letter alif or alif uh, after, uh, after a maksur letter or uh, maksur letter before alif in either way. Okay. So this is case number 12 where this alif will be ignored altogether. Let's go to Surah Al, uh, Al Fajr where this example is here and we have to understand uh, this one. Look, this is Surah Al-Fajr in the Holy Quran and that is chapter number 89. Chapter number 89 and verse number 24. The first word of verse number 24, chapter 89. Here you can find again the word on Alif and on top of Alif there is a um, Madda sign. This is a big mother sign. And this is another a writing mistake, I would say, 
this madda sign should be on ya not on alif okay alif should be here silent because before that there is a kasra this alif cannot be an extender cannot prolong the previous letter because the previous letter should be with fatha in this case it is with a kasra this madda sign should be on ya because the rule is that when the hamza is coming you know on a bed on a on a text on a on a line and before that if there is a huruf e madda either alif or waw or ya then ya or that harf e madda will take a a, a madda sign a, the good example is here look this one waja arabuk here alif on top of alif is a madda because after that is a hamza hamza demands that that should be a madde muttasil okay madde muttasil so that would be waja arabuka but in this case this long elongation because not of alif because of ya and that is why the pronunciation will be waji a so that should be remembered okay so i say the maksood letter a letter with a kasra followed by alif jim with a kasra followed by alif and in this case because that was in my i'm uh, you know using that i put a a madda sign on ya okay madda sign sa so i'm say like a mi ata we straight away go to meem and mi ata so that will be g g a g a so that g jim will be g and g a uh, that will be elongated so that is the case of uh, case number 12 and now i uh, like to conclude my lesson here with the case number 13 and that is also very very important to know as i mentioned in the beginning that lam waw if i go back to my lesson in uh, here i told you that uh, uh, silent letter or empty letter could be alif lam waw or ya lam waw ya they can come in the middle of a word okay waw waw and ja can come in the middle of a word and also at the end of a word but i told you the only the letter alif appears in the beginning of some words okay lam sakin lam empty lam cannot come in the middle in in the beginning ya cannot come in the beginning of a word a uh, waw cannot come cannot appear in the beginning of a word in the start of a word except alif and that is uh, now we coming to Uh, that part okay now here you say the word is uh, uh, alif lam mim lam kaf and if you know the beautiful um, attributes of almighty allah in surah al hashr we say wallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu al malikul quddus al salam al mu'minu you know many attributes of almighty allah and all attributes of almighty allah basically start with alif lam like ar rahman ar rahim and uh, ashkur al hakim al al alim so and so so how to deal a silent alif or blank alif in the middle uh, in the beginning of a word so first of all remember that alif you have to read uh, look after or look for the second letter if the second letter is lam in this case then alif will always take fatha it can never take a kasra not a dhamma let's go to the holy quran where these examples are given in surah al hashr everywhere but because those attributes come together uh, in a beautiful way so these are the examples now here is a al maliku they have put you know here is a jim okay remember here is a jim هو الله الذي لا اله الا هو we stop here and they have put here alif with a fatha al malikul quddus now if they continue up to here there is no stop in between like this one you know from al maliku al, al you know up to al mutakabbir 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight attributes have been given together 
they come they uh, in succession they appear to uh, in in succession in a, in a flow eight attributes now if a child or if a new to the reading of the holy quran and a person who is a short of breath because of weakness because of uh, poor health or not uh, not the practice okay uh, it is very uh, difficult and hard for that person mm -hmm. to start with al maliku and they would say from al mutakabbir in one breath al malik do it is said in a new reading in a continuous reading you can say al malikul quddus al salam al mu'min al al aziz al jabbar al mutakabbir okay that is a continuous recitation that will be you know is okay i am very easily i completed that one even i can do that with the practice i can start the whole verse we can do that in one breath but for uh, kids for the children um you know it is quite challenging and they have to stop in between so let's see i mentioned that there are eight attributes and a person who is reading in a mujawwad style in a very slow rhythmical style for example al malikul quddus sala you know very slowly as far as possible then he say okay i like to make my first stop here on al mumin i do the first four um, attributes in one go in one breath and i would say al mumin i will stop here okay so in this case how the the new um, reading will start so this alif will take always with fatha and it will be المؤمنُ المُهيمنُ العزيزُ الجبارُ المتكبر. This case, okay. So, point was that in the text of the Holy Quran, you find thousand times this blank alif. Remember, after blank alif, if there is a lam, straight away you go to alif and put fatha on that. as they have put alif on that you know al maliku they have already they have already put alif on that uh, fatha on that this al maliku but they have not put alif in the middle of the word in this verse because they know that they are continuation okay they people are like to join together they are not reading like that al malik al quddus as salam al mumin when you are uh, teaching the split word translation then you would say al quddus as salam al mu'min okay but when you joining together then this alif will be dropped okay so the point i was talking that how would you start any word not only the attributes of almighty allah any word with the uh, when there the second letter is with the, a sukoon with a lam so let's see this example this is uh, example of alif blank alif next letter is lam so it can't be said il ghaibi or ul ghaibi it will be always al ghaibi okay similarly here alif alif blank alif followed by lam either with a sukoon or with a shadda it will be alladhi because alif lam and similarly we come here for example this uh, alif alif is a blank and we do not know that uh, how would you do that because the previous word with ashabun nar some of the, some people can say okay the previous letter with the dhamma maybe if we are joining with the without joining we are starting we would say unnari no it will always with fatha annari in all cases so here al jannati so that is quite clear about the alif lam now we come to the second kind of uh, blank alif second kind of blank alif is that when the next very next letter is not lam when the very next letter is lam then the pronunciation is fixed with fatha but here you have to look the uh, the third letter in other words you can say after alif there must be a sakin and after sakin letter 
look at the uh, first word either you can say in such words you see the third word or after alif you see the mutaharrik letter so dal is not a mutaharrik that is is a sakin kha is a mutaharrik means vocal vowel vowel letter so in this case if kha or any mutaharrik or vowel letter takes a dhamma alif straight away takes with dhamma so it will be udkhulu but after sakin where is my hand if the next letter is uh, a mutaharrik letter is with a kasra or fatha it will take always is a kasra let's go to the holy quran where actual these words are here and again we go to chapter 89 which is the verse number um, surah al fajr okay uh, and here you can find here remember this alif without any stroke fatha kasra dhamma we do not know how to deal with this one it could be like the previous word ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna turji if i say turji continuation that is right because that is the part of the continuation but if we start from here either we'll say arji'i urji'i or irji'i mostly people i have heard they would say arji'i okay but actual pronunciation it will be with kasra irji'i because i said alif the next letter sakin if it is not alif then you have to re uh, think about the uh, next mutaharrik letter and in this case jim with the kasra and that's why it will say irji'i even if there is a jim with the fatha in any other case again the same rule will be applied irja'i if there was there okay so either kasra or dhamma mutaharrik letter mutaharrik letter carries a kasra or, or uh, fath, uh, sorry fatha it will be alif will take with the kasra and if the alif followed by lam mushaddad or lam sukun then do not take care of the next mutaharrik letter which is in this case is meem it could be any it has no um, you know significance on that for example if here the word is alif lam and next letter is lam okay though on this lam you cannot find any sukun sign any shadda sign but just as a as a rasmul khat as a written as a writing style it is written there okay and if you find alif lam together anywhere in the whole on, in the text of the holy quran then forget about the next letter which should be a third letter or or following letter okay anyone i give you another example here for example if this is uh, here alif lam when there is a alif lam we should not look what is the next we state we say al baladi al baladi and uh, uh, similarly other words so that was uh, al maliku how to do deal with alif lam how to deal with a blank alif followed by a mutaharrik with a dhamma always udkhulu and uh, mutaharrik followed by kasra or fatha always kasra so blank alif can take a fatha when the next letter is alif it can take a dhamma when the mutaharrik letter with dhamma it can only take a kasra when a mutaharrik letter either with a kasra or fatha this is the first two examples quite straight forward al maliku udkhulu here you have to uh, you know understand that it could be with the kasra with the fatha and the alif will always take with the kasra now we come to some images of the holy quran here i have already told you wala taqulanna li shay'in again alif will be silent here li shay'in we can't say li shay'in that will be wrong okay so li shay'in this is uh, again in uh, surah al kaf we have dealt with them and uh, miyata i have already told you about that and now another one ibadihil ulama again this alif waqaya inshallah in the in the future in some programs i will deal with the waw sakin or uh, ya sakin in this case today we have only covered the alif the 13 cases 
where alif comes without any harakat without any sign and how to deal uh, the alif in, in those cases and this is from surah jumua verse number 12 and i told you what is the significance of two alif together and when there is a noon khutni this small miniature noon what what you have to do with the previous word uh, you know where there is a fatha um, there are two examples i already told you in detail now this lakinna another one on the there is no sign in the holy quran of the cross or a small circle but you have to remember like i told you about the nadwa you know in surah al kaf this is again surah al kaf remember surah al kaf is very important in many cases especially is this time of the antichrist the jal that is very very important its message and there is a great amount of uh, knowledge and uh, prophecies with regards to the christianity their end their you know their uh, was that their future as well and the futures uh, of our the akhirin so uh, with regards to the pronunciation it is also very important okay so as the mention about this alif zayda or this cross or ana you can find many examples in surah al kaf so read that surah uh, take down the examples and when they come you read with the right uh, uh, mindful pronunciation so i told you ana has come 41 times lakin na will be wrong it will be lakin and uh, i advise you the open the copy of the holy quran surah al kaf this is verse number 39 take a column and on top of that alif you put a cross so that it could be identical with the, the information given on the margin so that is uh, um, and again uh, you know nadwa we have um, i have already advised you put a cross on that one so it could be identical with the margin as well verse number 15 and uh, again uh, this wajia i have already told you from the quran and that is the conclusion of uh, this uh, lesson um and i would say that with regards to the decoding uh, the silent letters uh, we have covered now the part 1 okay so there are four the part 1 we have covered inshallah the next time when we'll be mis- visit we will do that for you as well if uh, sir there is a question if you want to like to take yeah uh, yeah question yeah and there are two questions uh, i am dr azhar sadiqi sir sadiq sir i i want muted can you please accept assalamu alaikum warahmatullah wa alaikum assalam warahmatullah Absolutely, Zakallah. Thank you very much um, for everything. Just a couple of questions, please, for clarification. Uh, first, in Surah Jumua, where you spoke about the Noon Kutni, and you said that if you stop at the Wow, um, then you have to manifest the Alif. Yeah. Now, if you do that, can you clarify how you would begin the next word? Would it be with kasra would it be in faddu <laughs> yeah i think this is quite good question and if uh, you understood about uh, let's see this uh, uh, if you have understood about this um, as i told you about uh, um, you know the blank alif so in the blank because this noon we cannot start a word with noon mini h noon cannot start we can say nin faddu this noon is a product or is the result of the previous word because the actual word was that lahwan so make to make it vocal the lahwan it uh, it, it the noon has been uh, brought from there lahwan and lahwan in faddu to make it uh, make a connection so in this case because uh, if we remove noon qutni this small noon that will be alif blank alif so remember after alif there is no lam so it means if there is no lam lam sakin or lam mushaddad or any you know then we have to go further for the next letter and in this case fa with the fatha if it is with the kasra or fatha alif will always take kasra so it will be 
in Fadu, as we gave the example here, uh, here, Alif, next letter is la, not Lam, we go further. In this case, Jeem with the Kasra, Irji'i. Now, the point you are talking about that, Alif, next letter is not Lam, we proceed further. Fa with the Fatha, Alif with Kasra. So it will be in Fadbu. Fine. Jazakallah. Um, one other question, very briefly, if I may, um, Hafsab. You spoke about Surah Dahar, verse 16 and 17, and you said your preference at the end of verse 16 was to say Kawari Ra. Yes. Now, uh, which is understood. However, if you were to continue and not say Kawari Ra, but if you were just to continue through that ayat and join them, would it be Kawari Ra, Kawari Ra? Yes, that's fine. That's quite good. Uh, that if you continue, then alif will never be applied there. Okay, this uh, this this kind of alif is never applied when you are. We, we can't say kanat kawari ra kawari ra. No, it should be one kanat kawari ra kawari ra because you are joining together. When when I say alif should be there, that is you know that make a pattern and that rhythm. That is why. Um, and this is in the in the Arabic style that we can elongate to make a vocal beauty and it does not change the meaning. I give you one example. Qasida, ya ayna faidillahi wal irfan. Actually, the consonant word is uh, uh, noon, but underneath there is a kasra. So in order to make a vocal beauty, at the end, we we listen and we, we can do that. Either you say, Ya Aina Faidillahi Wal Irfan or Wal Irfani, you may most of the time, 99, 100% you may be uh, listening to that, that at the end, uh, Ni or, or um, Kamrani or similar. So sim similar will be applied here. When you join in together, then this Alif will not be read. It should not be read. And if it is you are making a stop, you can like, for example, um, because actual word is Qawarir. Remember, the actual word is Qawarir and that is Finnish. And then in the Rasmul Khat, it has been mentioned here as Alif. Okay, I will take one more question. Um, Hafiz Ahmed Sahib, I, I'm going to unmute you, please. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, I I uh, okay. I stop sharing my screen and ask uh, the Beer Bhatti Sahib to. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Hafiz. Ji, Hafiz Sahib, from my Yes, yeah, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Main ne pata karna ye chah raha hu ki ye swad aur zwaad ham zwaad kyun nahi padte Arabi Arabi zuban mein. ہمارے جو شروع میں تھے نا احباب اور پاکستان میں یا انڈیا میں ان کی جو پرنسیشن تھی وہ فارسی کے زیر اثر تھی زیادہ ٹھیک ہے تو اس کے اندر یہ پھر جو بعض جو عربی میں بعض حروف کے اندر جو فرق کیا جاتا ہے نا وہ اس کے اندر نہیں فرق کیا جاتا لکھنے میں فرق ہوتا ہے مثال کے طور پر اگر ہم لکھیں صادق وہ صادق ہے اور اگر آپ ثابت لکھیں ثابت صادق یا اگر سین کے ساتھ کوئی لفظ ہو سلیم کوئی پروننسیشن میں فرق نہیں کیا جاتا اردو پنجابی میں ٹھیک ہے تو شروع میں اس کو یہ جو ذات جو ہے نا وہ پڑھایا جاتا تھا وہی پڑھا جاتا تھا اور لوگ ایسے پڑھتے بھی ہیں چلے جزاکم اللہ حافظ صاحب وی ار گیٹنگ لیٹ کین یو پلیز میک بھٹی صاحب کو ہوسٹ سو ہی کین شیئر السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ ام First of all, Jazakallah, Jazakam Mullah for inviting us, uh, Midland regions. Uh, I believe that this is the um, first uh, Quran symposium online that we are doing and we thank the Midland regions for giving us this opportunity. Uh, having said that, the 
Talimul Quran website has always been online. And uh, here we are going to introduce, uh, sp spend a few minutes on what is available on our um, Talimul Quran website. So the Talimul Quran web website, you can have access through the main Ahmadiyya UK Jamaat website. This is now the official uh, Jamaat website. You know, in the previously we had so many websites. So uh, recently we have now consolidated all of them under one Ahmadiyya.uk website. And you go into the Ahmadiyya UK website and you select under the departments, you select Talimul Quran. And uh, the other way to do is to go directly ahmadiyya.uk forward slash NQC. And this is what you see when you type in ahmadiyya.uk. As you see, let's go in uh, the departments here. There'll be finance department, Isha department. Some of these departments are still under construction, but Alhamdulillah, the, the Talimul Quran has been established and is working. Uh, and is still available. So you go to Talimul Quran from here and you will see this home page. Uh, and there, is, there you will see there are two menus. There's a top bar menu and there's a bottom bar menu. There's a lot of information uh, there for the facility available for the users. So let's start with on the top left hand side, which is the online courses. This, these are the online Quran class courses that are supplied currently by uh, the, the department. So if I was to click on that, I will see a list of courses that are available. These courses are uh, not uh, instructional led, but self-paced learning courses. If you wish, everyone has different preferences. So if you want, you can actually enroll into any one of these courses, uh, except for this uh, di diploma Quranic courses, which is, which is specifically instructional led and is, um, will be ready when uh, Hafiz Ab has um, finalized it. But all these other courses are instructor, uh, are uh, self-paced and you can learn at your own time. So as an example, let me try this Tashil Quran course. Uh, and here I will, Let's go into, there's a, a G1 level G, level G, level G2, uh, and the Holy Quran is the G4 recitation course. These are available. So if I was to go on to uh, the Silul Quran level G1, and there you can see that each course is divided into lessons. And you can uh, take a lesson, uh, or you can skip the lessons that you know and go straight into the ones that you are interested in. Uh, the, some of the lessons at the end have a quiz. So at the end of the lesson, you can go and test yourself to see how well you have done or how well you have uh, taken in the lesson. So we go back and we then start to look at class recordings. And here we have the class recordings that have been ongoing for the past two, three years uh, of the G1, G2, G3, G4, G5. So let's have a look at an example of a 2020 uh, recordings that are currently going on um, for G1 course. This, uh, this is the sixth course, G1 course. And here you have the YouTube recording of all the previous lessons. And this is lesson 40. So if we was to go into a lesson uh, and th that is, you can now play that lesson. Uh, this was recorded on the 14th of November, which was on Friday, wasn't it? Yes, it was Friday. So you can see how up to date it is. Each lesson, oh sorry, 13th of November. This uh, recorded 13th of November. And um, you play a recording and here you can see uh, uh, on, on YouTube, the lessons that are actually taking place. Right, so next we go to, next one here is uh, recitational analysis. And in this tab, you have uh, some verses which are given with some in-depth analysis of how to recite 
uh, some of the common verses that we use. For example, in this verse, Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul, simple elongation to be done here. Wama, one sec to two seconds, Gunna here, two seconds Gunna here, Muhammad, and then Tanween, red, short, and so on and so forth. So you can, you can uh, look at this at your own uh, time. And the next is translation analysis. Just as with uh, recitation analysis, we then have the translation analysis, and that tells you the uh, in-depth breakdown of word by word uh, translation of the Holy Quran, like resumption particle, uh, particle of negation, wama, Muhammadun, and so on and so forth. Next, we go to the Quran multimedia. We're now on the bottom uh, menu here. I'm skipping some of these here as well, but you can look at that at your own leisure. But here we have uh, introduced some apps which are available on Android and iPhone. So if I look at the Quran, uh, the Sinun Quran iPhone app, uh, this, this, this is the iPhone app which is available, which, which you can download on your iPhones. And this one is on your Android phones. And this is uh, the Tehseen Quran booklet that is available. So uh, if, if you have left your book at home or you don't have one, uh, you can know you have this on your mobile device. Um, the next to that is the Talim Quran quiz app. This is another app which is available on the App Store and on Google. Uh, and for Android, uh, there are 30 quizzes. Uh, each quiz has 10 questions. Uh, you, you quiz yourself, test yourself, and then you have the opportunity to see how did you did in the score. Um, and then you can go back and it highlights the wrong questions you did and the right, and then it gives it the opportunity to redo the quiz. So it's quite useful in learning uh, the, the Holy Quran uh, different aspects of the Holy Quran. Another uh, app that we have is the Talimul Quran Classes app. You can, this app allows you to access the YouTube recordings through the app. So again, this is a, another useful app that we have created for you. Um, then we have uh, our, uh, under multimedia, we have our, some recordings uh, uh, playlists in our YouTube channel. Uh, there is the Nazam channel, which is this one. Um, this one, I would like to have this as an activity for yourself at the end of this uh, symposium to go up yourself to look at these recordings, which are very useful. These are recordings of the last 10 surahs, the short surahs. And the way it is, is a, there's a reciter he recites each verse like and then it is followed by a child who recites it twice. And in this way, you can then correct any mistakes that you have by following these recordings. It's nice to have a look at uh, the actual wording of it, but if you can keep it, if you keep, if you keep listening to it, you can also memorize the correct pronunciation, uh, at least of the uh, last 10 surahs. Um, not only is the Quran quiz available on the app, but you can also do it online on the website. So if I was to click on the Quran quiz, I will get this website. Uh, the, and this is essentially the same uh, as in the uh, app. So again, you can try this yourself as well. Then you have the question and answer forum next to the Quran quiz app. You have the question on here. You can ask any question. It does not need to be related to the Holy Quran. It could be any question on Islam and the way of life. Uh, and uh, inshallah, within a, a day or so, an answer will come. Uh, uh, and then you can ask a question. And there's a tab here to see what the answers were of the previous questions. Um, then we're getting quite close now to the end of this. We have the uh, the current uh, scheduled online group learning courses that are available. There are 
total of eight group learning courses, uh, G1 to G8. And here you can see the different, uh, a short description of what they are for. Uh, and on the, on the right, you can apply for yourself or your children for the, uh, to enroll on these courses. We have found that the courses G1, G2 uh, are quite heavily uh, subscribed. Uh, and we are limiting this, I, I believe it is to 100 or maybe to 25 or whatever the limit, limit is. Uh, so it is, uh, it is good to apply uh, as early as possible. Uh, we have now launched uh, beginning of uh, November. So just two weeks ago, uh, ITKA. ITKA stands for International Talimul Quran Acad Academy. UK, which I think Hafiza will give a better introduction. Uh, but here, if you was to type uh, itka, oh, sorry, I got this wrong. Itka is online. It should be itka.org.uk. Uh, there you have two um, buttons and you can do a student application. And this is, itka basically is for students uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. It's teaching on a one-to-one -one basis or on a small group learning. A uh, group can be no more than five, mm. uh, depending on teacher availability. So here you can apply for your children. Um, uh, and then um, we will then get back to you. But not only applicants for students, we are always looking for teacher applications as well. If you know that you have the ability to teach, then you can also apply online on the same page uh, where we, th there it is, teacher application. On that button there, itka.org.uk, you go on there, teacher application, uh, and there you will be assessed, uh, if anyone who applies, and then um, we, then you will be enrolled in the um, teaching of the Holy Quran. But remember, as I will read here, the Holy Quran is the book of the gracious God. It leads to the path of knowledge and wisdom. Those who keep reading it receives God's favors and blessings. Teaching of the Holy Quran is a greatly rewarding and noble task in the sight of Allah, the exalted. That's why we encourage anyone who is an able teacher to uh, apply uh, for uh, teaching the Holy Quran. Um, and I think that brings me to the end. Afisad, if that's... Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, the Bibati Sub, for uh, very informative uh, slides and this presentation. Um, basically, um, definitely the Bibati have rushed through that because we are now uh, going to conclude uh, this uh, symposium today. Inshallah, with a more uh, Quran quiz, we have already made that, and that was, inshallah, next time when we will visit uh, Midland regions uh, online, we can include Quran quiz in that program. So now back to, to the uh, regional Amir Sahib to conclude the session as decided. Molan Abdul Ghaffar Sahib is there. Can we? Hafizab, you want to say something about Ithika or is that, is that enough? Um, no, I think it's okay. Uh, this is International Talim Quran Academy. It is, uh, you know, this time is it is being run on a pilot project trial basis. And inshallah, hopefully it will be fully functional uh, from next year, January in which we will be taking not only the UK students, but also from other parts of the world. So that is a great online academy, a, a some sort of a university of the teaching or reading, learning the Holy Quran, uh, recitation of the Holy Quran in three levels, Tarjmatul Quran, translation of the Holy Quran in three levels, and Tafsirul Quran in three levels. So inshallah, nine levels will be in these three and uh, some other webinars, inshallah, will come. And uh, 
inshallah it will be quite beneficial for our uh, children um, from un, you know under 7 and to any any age atfal nasrat qudam ansar lajna so we are making the classes basically basically it has started this time we have made over uh, 10 classes there about 50 children are taking classes inshallah more information will come in due course okay abdul ghafar sahib assalam alaikum ji regional mr sahib yeah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, once again, uh, Hafiz Sahab, Aman Sahab, uh, Davir Sahab, and the National Talim Quran team. Uh, Jazakallah for this, uh, for this excellent uh, symposium that you have managed to put together for Midlands region. I'm very grateful for, to you all for your valuable time. Uh, we are getting late now for Nimaz, uh, so I will just uh, request uh, most senior Murabbi Mulan Abdul Ghaffar Sahab to just give some concluding remarks and to lead us in silent prayers, please. Abdul Ghaffar Sahib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everything has been done. Uh, we've thanked those who have uh, participated. And I'll only say that may Allah bless all those who have participated in this uh, blessing, uh, blessed program. This is a great blessing for us. The Quran is a very great blessing. And coming together to talk about the Quran and to learn more about the Quran is a great blessing. May Allah bless all of you. So you join me in a silent prayer. Let us pray. Allahumma amin. <laughs>